Switching gears here, meanwhile, Matt Damon, among others, showed us what life just might look like on the red planet in The Martian. Ridley Scott, really. But now, the scenario may be, in fact, closer to reality than we think, as SpaceX founder and CEO Elon Musk unveiled plans to transport humans and thankfully cargo to Mars. He hopes to get it done in the next decade. His ultimate goal, to colonize said red planet. Space and physics editor for Scientific American, Lee Billings, good enough to join me now on set. Also the author of Five Billion Years of Solitude. There is not nearly enough time for your visit here with me, Lee. <laughs> so to the plans we go. Again, we heard uh, Elon Musk say that he hopes to embark on this mission by 2022. Is that in any way realistic? I, I think if uh, if everything goes according to plan, to Elon's plan, it could happen uh, in the mid 2020s. Uh, you know, I think you have to factor in the fact that in the past they've had lots of schedule slips with uh, earlier rockets, and uh, these rockets they've been building in the past and launching have been much simpler than what they're talking about here. Uh, so maybe if you expand it by a factor of uh, two or three, two or three times, then I think we're looking more realistically 2030s or maybe 2040s. Okay, say. 2030s. Then let's say it happens. Then the vessel uh, that SpaceX will be using to do the transport. I know, uh, among other things, it's said that Elon Musk wants to build it, make it reusable so that it can produce fuel both mid-flight and, in fact, on Mars. Uh, that's right. So it's called the Interplanetary Transport System is what he's called it because it can, can even go other places besides Mars. He wants it to actually push to the moons of Jupiter. Yeah, he wants to kind of go everywhere. Any place there's a solid or liquid surface to land on. Um, and the idea is, as you said, it's fully reusable. It dwarfs the Saturn V that took uh, Apollo astronauts to the moon in the 1960s. A little bigger than that, about three times more powerful and far more efficient because if you can fully reuse this thing, that's what's going to make it potentially possible. We sent people to the moon in the 1960s for a cost of about $10 billion per, per person, right? That's way too expensive to start something on Mars, a self-sustaining city or something like that. Uh, he wants to get it down to the cost of maybe $200,000 per person to go to Mars, which is pretty crazy. I mean, you know, there's uh, more expensive apartments in Queens. So uh, <laughs> is that possible? In theory, it is, but it's going to take a lot of hard work. Okay. So uh, we also, in context, uh, are seeing these plans unveiled. Having seen, perhaps many have seen the film, The Martian, if you've read the book, um, there is some science to wade through, but as as you're, you're the best person I am going to have today to ask about the technology that the book lays out that I'm sure has informed Musk's plans. Does it read more science or fiction to you? Uh, the, the book or M Musk's plan? Uh, the, the book, and and perhaps as it may have in, informed what Elon Musk would like to do. Yeah, so obviously, the, I mean, the book was based on very good science, and uh, and the author, uh, Andy Weir, did a lot of hard work researching it. Um, and I think Musk has obviously done a lot of hard work researching his 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 plan here, too. Uh, it's based on sound science and engineering. Uh, the real if difficulty is, you know, where is the money going to come from? And then there's other problems that they really aren't considering when they think about transporting all these people and cargo to Mars. They're not thinking that about how are we going to keep these people alive yeah. and entertained on the way there? How are we going to set up laws if we have a city on Mars? How are we going to deal with the ethical issues of uh, maybe a biosphere that might exist there, little bacteria in the How rocks? long a trip are we talking? Uh, so they're talking about on the order of six months, even though uh, Musk has said it could be as little as something like 80 days. Uh, that's if you're traveling around like 62,000 miles per hour, I think. And you're going to leave from Earth about every two years. That's when Mars and Earth align, um, and it's most efficient to send things in between them. So every two years is the idea that these ships would go out uh, on the order of ultimately maybe tens of thousands of flights of people um, to get maybe a million people there by the 2040s or 2060s or some time. And again, these are very optimistic estimates, I think. The real idea is that this is a stretch goal that people could reach towards uh, in developing rockets and figure out new ways to uh, make humanity multiplanetary. That's what this is all about for Musk. Well, and he had said... Uh and not to be overly grim, that in many ways this could actually be a one-way ticket, that he sees this as a choice either to stay on Earth and wait for extinction to find us or to push into the stars and so avoid it. Is that, I'm reminded of the eternal sunshine of the spotless mind, the eraser that's coming up behind us. Is that the sense here? We've got to get off the planet before it finishes us? I think that is the sense the, in the very long term that Musk is operating under. Uh, and of course, he would even say that, you know, Earth's a very nice place to live right now. That's where he lives. That's where he plans to stay and watch his children grow up. He wants to retire on Mars, he says. He wants to go to Mars as long as it doesn't crash on landing. Uh, 
So uh, I, I do think, though, that it ultimately, at some point, we are going to have to kind of get off this rock, because uh, otherwise, you know, uh, things that stick around here tend to go extinct. So that is what's driving this in the long term. The first ticket said to, uh, in theory, uh, cost perhaps nine or ten billion dollars. Uh, he hopes to have, does Elon Musk, that down to a hundred thousand uh, dollars in the 2030s or 40s. However, what inflation might do to those numbers <laughs> is anybody's guess, but it would certainly seem to be a rich person's Fancy. Certainly for now. And, uh, you know, there's obviously several billionaires out there who are interested in this field. Uh, you look at uh, Jeff Bezos, obviously, of Amazon.com, whose company Blue Origin is uh, also building rockets, a big competitor of SpaceX. They're also interested in having millions of people live uh, in space in the future and make their lives there. Uh, I think it's beyond the 2030s for us. I think that we're looking at perhaps our children or grandchildren maybe really being more involved in this. Uh, the current price that, that uh, Musk has quoted for a, a ticket for this happening is on the order of $500,000. The idea is it would go down to $200,000 or $100,000 in the future. But that requires flying a very large number of these things and reusing them fully. So it's all, everything kind of has to work. All the gears and cogs have to work perfectly together. If we're going to Mars, I'm going. I'm hanging on. <laughs> That's, I, I, am, I will make it, Lee. Uh, again, the author of Five Billion Years of Solitude from Scientific American, Lee Billings. We really appreciate the time today. Thank you.